Welcome back to Blackstone and to the world of the living. We had some business here. Very good. Commencing countdown, Doctor. Come on now. The Fix. numbers! Fix the damn numbers! Will you forget the damn case? You gotta do something! 90 seconds. The minimum Calm amount down. of energy cool necessary Your to trigger readings a convulsion are going off the chart. is also sufficient to cause minor brain damage. So, we can't look back at the numbers on the machine, which we need to dial in. ...and ongoing cognitive problems. 851. Okay. Except that it's a mirror image, so the actual resonance frequency would be 1 to 8. Oh, this is big trouble. And this is slow, so trial and error won't help. Congratulations, Oliver. You have lived to fight another day. You're limping, Oliver. Muscle pains. The third symptom. Who would have thought something so small could have caused so much harm? Yes, Oliver. The possible toxin has been narrowed down a lot. What are those symptoms again? Shivering, muscle pain, nausea, and paralysis. Not this. Remind me of the symptoms. Shivering, headache, sweating, and delirium. Not that. I've forgotten the symptoms. Shivering, headaches, muscle pain, and delirium. Maybe. What are the symptoms? Shivering, headaches, muscle pain, and nausea. It could be these two. Let's get the locket back to Lorena. Although, might as well tie up a loose end. Oh, hello. Your diary says that Dr. Metcalf used to take you into the utility room. Why? That's where he would burn the things that belonged to me. The things I cared about. He said it would help make me feel better. But he was lying. He was just being cruel. Everything that was ever precious to me, he put into that furnace. And I just remembered I missed a line back in the ECT room. Won't be a minute. They must be made of double thick glass, else everyone in town would have heard the scream. Okay, I'm done here. Back to Lorena. There's a bit of extra locket-related chat. It's hanging from the circuit board. I doubt that Malcolm would leave something so precious lying about in such a manner. Put it in the case, please. Thank you. You cannot know what this means to me. What did he want with it? It was engraved M.M., which were both his initials and mine. He took a fancy to it and decided to steal it and give it to his secret lover, that Hartwick woman. You said you had some information. One day, I walked into Malcolm's office just as he was pushing in a book on his bookshelf. As he did so, an entire section of the shelf swung open, and I could see into a dark room beyond. What did it look like? 
I didn't see much, but it looked like some kind of a storeroom. What did Malcolm do? He immediately pulled the book back into line with the others and then took me down to the ECT room. He gave me an extra dose of the shock treatment, hoping it would erase my memory. Do you remember anything else? He asked me about it later, but I pretended to have forgotten everything. What was the title? I couldn't see, but there was more than one. Then, as he took me down to the basement, he kept talking about the four greatest minds in medical history and what they had in common. It seemed quite important to him. Please leave it. I couldn't bear to part with it again. It is... That locket was mine before your father gave it to that disgusting woman. Right, so the puzzle now is to figure out the four greatest minds. Vi can't help us. But we have seen a hint to this puzzle. A very big and in-your-face hint. Paracelsus was the... That is Hippocrates. I have a great admiration for Freud. And that's three out of four. Yes, Oliver? I must be going crazy. Just like last time. Is that what you think, Oliver? That you went around the asylum earlier, stealing these objects and hiding them so you can find them now? Unlikely, don't you think? Yes. Now for the bookshelf. On aphasia. Who's the fourth? There is a bit of a geometrical pattern here, too. Yes, it's Metcalf. Finally. You said it would be soon, Dad. It's been a long time. I'm sorry, Josh. I know it's hard. I'm doing the best I can. So, Oliver, you are making progress. Why don't you stop? Can't you see what is happening? Don't you know that you are more alive than you've been in years? The fear has made you strong. Why don't you just tell me where the secret room is? Why do you fight me, Oliver? Don't you see how fear and pain have helped you solve these problems? With every step, you are coming closer to me. If you fail, you will die. But you should at least be satisfied that I will train your son in your place. I will never give in. I see that the time you have spent here has not had the desired effect. Very well. Against my better judgment, I will help discipline you. There. I have removed the elevator handle to focus you more closely on the task at hand. Remember, Oliver, you have only until dawn. What? He can't do that. He can. I've taken away the handle. Or if you persist in your nonsense, you took it away yourself. We're close to the end game. It seems you almost lost your balance there for a second, Oliver. 
feeling a little dizzy, nauseous too, huh? Eh? Your symptoms should make it obvious by now which biotoxin has poisoned you. Shivering, headaches, muscle pain, nausea. If you do not administer the antidote quickly, you will die very soon. Now let's sort this out. I bought it in Brazil at the same time as the box you found in the safe. Yes, Oliver? What are the symptoms? Shivering, headaches, muscle pain, and nausea. We've got the plague. Every guide says they've got the plague, and everyone wonders if it's random. Quinine. Take it, if you believe the neurotoxin was malaria. That is antivenin. If you think the toxin was snake venom, then this is the vial you should choose. The vial contains chloramphenicol, an antibiotic that is effective against typhus. This is streptomycin, which is used to combat bubonic plague. Not afraid of a little needle, are you, Oliver? One of those vials contains the antidote to the poison within you. Each of them will provide quick, temporary relief, but only the correct one will cure you. Choose wisely, Oliver, for if you choose poorly, you will be dead before the night is out. Oliver doesn't like needles. You seem to be choking, Oliver. Perhaps you should have taken an antidote to that toxin. Good night, Oliver. I'm Let's stopped. skip all this. Yes, the timer starts when you enter the room. What can And there is one more after you take the shot, but I'm not showing that death. Are you sure about your choice, Oliver? Or are you still in doubt? It doesn't matter, I suppose. You'll learn the results quickly enough. Problem solved. That's one of Edison's earliest attempts. It must be worth a fortune by now. Now, now, mustn't be greedy. I'm surprised it's still standing. It's just something I knocked together years ago. Solid metal. If the entire hospital burned down, that door would still be standing. It's locked. We'll spend a while looking for the key. Medical texts. Even with all the shelves in my office, I never seem to find room for all my books. They're over your head, Oliver. Trust me. I'll sum up the pages again. It's short. Subjects Abe W. Involuntary admission, confusion of sexual identity. Dresses inappropriately and has feminine possessions. Will be a test case for Dr. Cotton's focal infection theory. And will be interviewed after each test event. First test, extraction of teeth. No improvement on sexual confusion. Perhaps cluster surgeries will work better. Next, they remove the tonsils, appendix, thyroid, and some of the upper intestine. Subjects unavailable for interview for several days after the surgery, but then still wanted his feminine possessions back. Maybe the theory was wrong. An 
another class of surgery, removal of sinuses, epiglottis, spleen, gallbladder and one kidney. Unavailable for interview for 22 days, ambivalent about sexual identity. The method is working. Now they switch to more precise surgeries, removing each limb in a separate session. After the resection of the colon, however, he demanded his feminine possessions again. There will be one final effort before pronouncing the therapy ineffective. The removal of penis, testicles, urethra and prostate. Also gone are the pancreas, pineal and pituitary glands. All samples safe to be analyzed for infection. Subject died a week later, but expressed no desire for his accessories. Thus, the surgery was a success. Further experiments are needed to see if bodily infections can contaminate the brain. Um, well, how do I get out? The journal doesn't let go. Okay. You've stopped shivering, Oliver. Perhaps now is a good time to tell you that choosing streptomycin to get rid of your bubonic plague was a smart move. Let's find this Abe W. Ah, the surgery. I see the renovations haven't reached this place. Scrubbing up was always the most tedious part of performing surgery. Ordinary household soap. Don't let them tell you there are special antibacterial kinds. Soap is soap. Leave it, Oliver. One day, a real surgeon might use this place again. Roses and lemons, say the bells of St. Clement's. Or was it oranges? I wouldn't be in such a hurry to get down there if I were you. Patience, Oliver. Have a look around first. It's a little code I made up. See if you can figure it out. No, no, Oliver. Never guess. You don't have enough information yet to know what this combination is. Sorry? My diploma from the Sorbonne. That is where the image appears when the machine is switched on. I remember the first time I used one of these to look inside the human body. It was like a miracle. I kept track of how often I used the machine each day. I didn't want to get overexposed to radiation. once part of a real person. We have nothing to discuss, Oliver. Primitive, but it served. I performed some of my most brilliant surgery on that table. IV bottle. I expect they've turned a bit sour by now. It's just an old empty box. Must you scrutinize everything? The clock is ticking, Oliver. It's almost dawn. It is my own invention. The first artificial respirator. Years ahead of its time. My first model of the respirator always overheated, 
After I added grates for air intake and exhaust, the problem was solved. That's where we deposited the waste materials. It's empty. Take my word for it. If it weren't, you would smell it. We still haven't found Abe, though. It belonged to my father. It was the only thing good I ever got from him. Look who's talking. Henry Cotton, our greatest authority on the focal infection theory. A brilliant man. I don't believe you can get in there yet. Tease. Hello? Dr. Metcalf, is anyone there? I am scared. Pay no attention to the boy. Oh, don't worry, he can't hear me, only you. I won't hurt you. Okay, it's been a long time since anyone came to visit me. What's your name? Well, my mom called me Abby, but after I came here, I said that couldn't be my name anymore. How old are you? Six and a half, but I'll be seven next month. He's just a little younger than you. Does he like to play with dolls? He likes Batman, and he has some toy soldiers. I have a doll, except she's missing right now. What does it look like? Not it, her. Her name is Samantha. She looks just like my mom. She has long brown hair and a pretty red dress. What happened to her? I don't know, but I sure miss her. I hope you find her. You sound nice. Would you like to play a game? What games do you know? I know, let's play I Spy. I'll go first. I spy my little eye. Something that begins with T. Now you try to guess what it is. In a moment, first. That is the boy's spleen. That is the boy's hand. That is the boy's colon. That is the boy's stomach. That is the boy's liver. That is the boy's tongue. That is the boy's pancreas. That is the boy's lower intestine. That is the boy's lymph nodes. That is the boy's lymph nodes. That is the boy's esophagus. That is the boy's lymph nodes. That is the boy's lung. That is the boy's heart. That is the boy's brain. And these are the boy's eyeballs. This is one of the stranger eye spy sessions I've seen in games. Did you find it yet? Is it in this room? Of course it is, silly. Otherwise, we couldn't call it eye spy. I forgot already. Something that begins with tea. Well, breakfast begins with tea, but there's no breakfast here, unless you count the bone. Yay, you got it! Okay, here's another one. I spy with my little eye. Something that begins with L. Lymph nodes? You're so cold, you're at the North Pole. And what about my turn? Too hard? Are you a professional? Nope, but maybe I will be when I grow up. Not much of a career, is it? I want to make sure I've got it right. 
I spy with my little eye something that begins with L. That's it. And you know, even with that light on, it sure is dark in here. Not like the chapel upstairs. How come? It's nice and quiet. I like to go there when I'm getting better after my operations. I like the pretty glass windows and the nice music. That sounds hard. Dr. Metcalf is trying to make me better. There's a part inside me that's sick, and he keeps trying to find it and cut it out. He doesn't know what it is. It's really nice to keep trying, though. How many operations have you had? I'm not sure. There's somewhere they need to cut me open, and somewhere they don't. Since I don't have legs anymore, they have to carry me around. And someone has to feed me now, too. Do you know what it's called? They won't tell me. They say I'm too young to understand, but I think I know. I'm sick because my mom wanted me to be a girl. Or are you a girl? A boy, of course. I was never confused. Only my mom was. She really wanted to have a girl. She used to put me in dresses and brush my hair and call me Abby. I just pretended with her to make her happy. Did you ever try to tell him? He isn't a good listener. Not like you. Why does that mean you're sick? You have to ask him that. I guess if you pretend something to make someone else happy, it means you're sick. What does it sound like? There's an old man who comes and plays the organ. His name is Mr. Morgan. Morgan on the organ. Oh dear. I don't know how to get inside. Oh, it's easy. Just ask one of the attendants. They've got these big key rings, and the key to the chapel is always the biggest one on the ring. Sometimes they let me open it myself. You're not going to leave me all alone, are you? I'll come back. I promise. Cross your heart and hope to die? Cross my heart and... I promise. Okay, bye. Abe's treatment method may be slightly exaggerated, but it's very much real. Have you ever considered that most of you know about lobotomy because it's the most presentable of the psychosurgery procedures? Where's Mom? She's probably home waiting for us. She'll give you a great big hug when we get back. Welcome to the chapel. My name is Frank Morgan. I was the visiting organist. I'd love to end the update here, but I can't let you go without this information terminal. This is where patients recovered from psychosurgery. It's from before this became an asylum. Dedicated to some St. George guy. The patron saint of hospitals and England. Not English, not a doctor. Became a martyr after he was killed, brought back to life and killed again a few times for good measure. The being killed again part makes him sound like a poor patron saint for hospitals. Psychosurgery here is a whole section. Generally, any attempt to remove or destroy body tissue falls under this category. Lobotomy is the most commonly known form, but there are many more. Some were discredited, but some are accepted even today. Hormones are important. 
so some people thought that maybe they should cut out some of the more accessible glands and see what happens. I hope you weren't using those ovaries or testicles. Gynecological procedures Some women get crazier when on their periods. What if we remove their ovaries? That will calm them down. Oh, and how about a double uterine exciter? Have an electric zapper up your uterus for 10 minutes. Or hot water injections into the vagina, that's sure to help. Clitoral cauterization just rolls off the tongue. In layman's terms, that means applying a red-hot branding iron directly to the clitoris. Now we skip a bit to lobotomy. In 1935, a Portuguese doctor came up with the idea of severing the two frontal lobes of the brain. In 1949, he got the Nobel Prize for it. Originally, it involved drilling holes in the skull, but an American made it cheaper and more marketable. By driving in an ice pick through an eye socket, and then you just wiggle it in the brain a little. It was so popular that 40,000 Americans had been lobotomized by 1955, and the doctor who came up with the ice pick trick was roaming the countryside with a portable lobotomy kit in his pocket. And finally, Henry Cotton. His theory was that all mental illness came from an infection in the body. Remove the infected part and cure the patient. He'd start by removing teeth, and when he ran out of teeth, he'd remove the tonsils, and... Actually, if something could be removed that you'd live without it, Henry Cotton would most likely try to get it out. That included removing most of the colon with a 30% mortality rate, because all this was done before antibiotics. It says here the method fell in disfavor after a boom in the 20s and the 30s, but what really happened was Henry Cotton dying of a heart attack in 1933, leaving no one to push his insanity. The staff of his clinic, however, yes, he headed the clinic, continued to carry out some of his procedures for another two decades. This is all real, look it up. Dr. Cotton got a bit weird in his final years. Had a thing for teeth. So, I hope this set the mood for the final push. Next time we'll either finish the game or come very close to it. <laughs>